AEW Dynamite kicked off the month of March in Denver. And it was kind of underwhelming. Had to happen it sooner, sooner or later. Let's get into it. This is All Elite Review. What's happening ladies and germs, this is the Packer Man and welcome to today's edition of All Elite Review. Where today we are going to be reviewing the episode of AEW Dynamite from Denver, Colorado. Which was admittedly not that interesting. You know, especially compared to what we saw in the month of February. I mean, it just, a lot of the matches didn't really click with me. Um, I mean, the promo, a lot of the promos were good and we had a surprise appearance on this show as well it's just that I don't know the wrestling just didn't really click with me in this episode so uh, let's go ahead and get into this um, John Moxley comes out to start the show uh, he thanks the fans for their support and calls out the inner circle um, and dares them to come at him and uh, of course they all come out to confront Moxley uh, Jericho basically says that he'll take a 60 day leave of absence uh, if Mox is able to walk out of Denver on his own power. Um, the first match of the evening was an eight-man tag team match between SCU and the debuting Colt Cabana taking on the Dark Order and the Beaver Boys, which I'm going to separate the two of them since the Beaver Boys are still technically their own tag team. It's just that they're a part of the Dark Order at the moment. So uh, highlights of this match. Uh, Colt hits a head scissors takedown on Stu. Uh, SCU hits a slingshot elbow, leg drop splash on John Silver. Sky with a drop kick on Silver. Uh, Uno hits a neck breaker on Daniels. Uh, Dark Order hit a side slam leg drop combo on Daniels for two count. Uh, Beaver Boys hit a combo attack on Daniels for two count, which looked really good. Uh, Daniels with a flatliner on Stu. He gets the hot tag to Kazarian, who hits a flying forearm. Scissors kick, and of course his springboard leg drop, which looked really good. Uh, SCU starts teeing off on Uno after sending the other members of the Dark Order out of the ring. Daniels hits a stomp and a tope suicida. Kazarian hits a slingshot cutter on Silver, only gets two count. Colt hits an Asai moonsault onto Uno and Silver on the outside. And then Scorpio Sky hits a tope con hero to the outside. And then Colt Cabana hits his uh, Chicago Skyline, I believe it was on John Silver, which is basically he puts him up into a um, fireman's carry climbs up to uh, the middle rope and then drops uh, his opponent over the top turnbuckle. He calls up the Chicago Skyline and then hits a Superman pin, which looks really, really crazy, uh, and gets the three count for the victory. So SCU and Colt Cabana uh, get the victory in this eight-man tag match. Uh, afterwards, uh, Uno got on the um, microphone and said, this is not supposed to happen. When the Exalted One arrives, heads will roll. And, of course, uh, the prevailing rumors is that Matt Hardy is uh, the exalted one. Uh, which, let's be honest here, if he's not at this point, then you might as well just kill off Dark Order. Because they'll be worthless at that point. But, uh, this was still a pretty good opening match. I gave it three and a half stars out of five. Uh, the next match was the obligatory women's match, which is usually in this slot on the card. Uh, it was a singles match between Big Swole and Leva Bates. I mean, this was pretty much a squash match. Uh, Leva managed to get a little bit of offense in by hitting um, Big Swole with one of her books. And then a lung blower, but that's about all the offense she got. 
Tool came in and hit a big like swinging power bomb. Hits a nice high kick, uh, followed by a slingshot cutter, and then hits the dirty dancing for the quick three count and the victory. You know, it's obvious that they're going to be pushing Big Swole, and uh, I think this victory actually pushes Swole into the top five in my in my personal ranking. So there's that. Um, as with all squash matches, I gave it one and a half stars out of five. I mean, it was a squash match. What else do you want me to say? So uh, Cody comes out for a promo and calls out MJF, basically telling him that, you know, if you beat me fair and square, then come out and say it to my face. And then we have a surprise appearance by Jake the Snake Roberts. And I was just like, holy crap. You know, basically he comes out and starts trash talking Cody and said, yeah, I can't, you know, stand listening to you anymore. I never bitched about a loss, you know, and all this stuff. And he says that, um, that he has a client that he wants to take uh, Cody on with. He says he's like a phoenix rising from the ashes and will take flight. Which, you know, based on what he's saying right there, it almost makes me think it's the murder hawk Lance Archer who recently signed with all the wrestling. So, who knows at this point. But then he basically says that um, you never turn your back on someone you fear or respect. And he basically turned his back on Cody and threw the microphone to him. So, uh, this will be something to keep an eye on uh, in the next couple weeks. Uh, the next match was a singles match between Pac and Chuck Taylor. Of course, continuing, you know, Pac's little rivalry with the best friends. Uh, highlights with this highlights of this match. Um, Pac hits a side hit scissors takedown. Uh, Chuck hits a uh, baseball slide. Uh, and then a rising knee and a sit-out powerbomb. And a tilt to world backbreaker. Pac hits a running elbow strike. And a snap suplex on the floor. Chuck hits an arm drag and a lariat. And then a drop kick. A pescado. And then a falcon arrow. Only gets a two count though. Uh, Pac hits a slingshot cutter. Um... Not exactly sure what he was going for. I don't know if he was going for like a Hurricane Ron or something, but then Chuck kind of counters into kind of like a gory, gory special for a second. But then he transitions it into the awful waffle, um, which is his personal finisher, where he kind of starts out in like a Canadian backbreaker position, but then transitions it into a pile driver. Um, it looks devastating as all hell. He calls it the awful waffle. Only gets a two count though. Um. And then he tries to go for a moonsault, but Pac moves out of the way and locks in the Brutalizer and gets the submission victory. So uh, afterwards, um, Orange Cassidy gets into the ring and gets right in Pac's face. And basically it's like, man, he showed more emotion than he ha has, you know. And then the Lucha Brothers come down and attack the, uh, the best friends once again. They had a double super kick on Orange. Uh, they attack the other members. Uh, best friends <clears throat> and then Pac gets on the mic and reveals that he and the Lucha Brothers have joined forces and they are now known as the Death Triangle or as Pac uh, said or as my comrades have uh, say in Spanish uh, Triangulo Esca de la, de la Morate or whatever the fuck it was I think it's Triangulo de la Morate you know and then uh, they hit their uh, Zero Fear uh, Package Pile Driver Double Stomp Combo to Orange Cassidy. Looked like he absolutely got fucking killed. So we have a new trio in AEW now. And it is Pac, Pentagon Jr., and Ray Phoenix. Like, holy fuck. The, the amount of talent in those three dudes is absolutely insane. And now they're together as a trio. You know, and considering the fact that these guys are coming together as a trio, you know, it's really strengthening, you know, the fact that Cody said that uh, they are probably going to add a trio's tag team championship at some point. You know, now you have Pac and the Lucha Brothers teaming together in a trio. So you have the best friends, Jurassic Express, um, the Inner Circle could conceivably be called a trio. You have MJF, the Butcher, and the Blade teaming together on a regular basis. And now you have Pac and the and the Lucha Brothers teaming as the Death Triangle. So this is just strengthening, you know, the fact that they're probably going to have a trios championship at some point. Yeah, which I'm fine with. It's just that we would like to have a sing a secondary singles title as well. You know what I mean? 
you know, let's add a singles, another singles championship. I mean, if you're going to add a second tag title um, to the mix, let's add a second um, singles title as well. You know, because that's what a lot of people have been clamoring for. You know, but that's just my two cents on it. But uh, this was still a good match. I gave it three and a half stars out of five. Uh, the next match, uh, Jake Hager against QT Marshall. I mean, who the fuck do you think was going to win this match? You know, um, QT had um, Dustin Rhodes and Brandy at uh, ringside, but uh, it wasn't going to matter in the slightest. Uh, highlights of this match, Hager hits a power slam, the Oklahoma Stampede, and a kitchen sink. Uh, QT hit a Tajiri Inziguri, basically that handspring Inziguri. A twisting senton splash, only got a one count. Hager hits a roaring lariat, and locks in the arm triangle for the win. Um, afterwards, the inner circle start attacking QT and Dustin. Cody comes down and tries to help out, and so does Matt Jackson. Uh, but the numbers game kind of catches up to him. Hangman Adam Page comes down. Uh, and saves the day. Uh, first, he, he had a drink in his hand. Of course, he puts it on top of the ring post. And then starts attacking the inner circle. Um, gets sent onto the apron by Hager. And he was like, whoa! And that ring aids control and hits the buckshot lariat on Hager. To a huge roar from the crowd. Goes over and grabs his beer. And uh, gets in Matt's face and flips him the finger. Obviously, he still has a very huge problem with Matt Jackson. And then he starts collecting an armful of alcohol from the fans, which is pretty fucking funny. Yeah, Hangman Adam Page is becoming a huge commodity for AEW. And who'd have thought that just adding an alcohol, an alcoholic beverage, you know, would turn this guy into a megastar, you know what I mean? But uh, the match itself, eh, I gave it 2.25 stars out of 5, nothing special. Uh, afterwards, MJF cuts a backstage promo. He reveals a shirt that says, I pin Cody. Basically rubbing it in. It basically declares that he's going for the world championship. And he doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who gets in his way. So, he's basically throwing his uh, hat into the ring. You know, he's, going, he's got his sights set on that world title now. So, oh boy. <laughs> and then our main event was supposed to be... A tag match between Chris Jericho and Sammy Guevara against John Moxley and Darby Allen, but uh, Hager and Proud and Powerful attack Moxley during his entrance to the crowd. They were kind of disguised as fans with masks on, and uh, they basically attacked him and um, left them laying in the back. Uh, so Darby basically had to go this entire match alone. Uh, so he sends Sammy, Sammy into the guardrail and a drop toe hold on Jericho into the stairs. But Sammy hits a running knee strike, Jericho with a back suplex, and then the rest of the uh, inner circle arrives at ringside. So it was basically a five on one. So there was no way on God's green earth that Darby was winning this match. But the crowd was still heavily behind him regardless. So, um, yeah, if you don't think that AEW can create new stars, well, just look at this match. What's that? <coughs> <coughs> Ooh. Pull a fucking muscle again from a fucking sneeze. Um, Darby hits an Asai moonsault on Y2J for a two count. Uh, Jericho puts in the walls of Jericho, but Darby gets to the ropes. He hits a uh, Jericho hits a baseball slide. Um, the inner circle does their exchange suplex, of course. Uh, Darby hits a lariat on Jericho, followed by a two up base to Asita. Sammy hits a uh, Rising penalty kick basically had him in a uh, fireman's carry threw him down and then basically kicked him in the stomach on the way down Pretty unique only got a two count though um, Darby blocks uh, Jericho's lion salt and hits a Yoshi tonic for a two count and then he hits a cop and drop on the entirety of the inner circle uh, He hits his uh, shoulder ride stunner on um, Sammy Kavara and hits the coffin drop on Sammy only gets a two count before Jericho breaks it up um, Darby tries to go for a tope suicide to the outside on Jericho, but Jericho catches him with the Judas effect He rolls uh, Darby back into the ring and Sammy gets the three count for the victory So your winners are Chris Jericho and Sammy Kavara Then Moxley comes down with a chair and clears the ring, but then the uh, but then Hager gets in and uh, waffles him with a lariat 
and uh, the inner circle basically um, mobs him for the most part. Uh, they take him up to uh, the, um, the stage and basically do a shield-esque uh, power bomb onto a bunch of tables. And they basically all give him the finger in the same kind of pose that the shield did. So um, Jericho and the inner circle uh, get one up on Moxley on this episode. Uh, despite the, the despite the fact that this match was not what was advertised, uh, it was still pretty solid. Uh, I gave it three and a half stars out of five, and the crowd was fully behind Darby Allen in this case. But um, overall, though, the show was just not as good as um, some of the other shows, especially from February. I mean, some of the wrestling was all right, but. It, it, it was nothing spectacular, in my opinion. You know, I know there are a few people that actually enjoyed the show, and that's fine. But in my opinion, it just it didn't really deliver. I mean, after you know that um, freeing to the lead episode where Matt meets with uh, Matt Hardy meets with the Young Bucks, you know, there was a lot of expectation, like, oh my God, Matt's going to be here. And, you know, you're hearing about Lance Archer, of course, signing with AEW, thinking he's going to debut in this episode. Uh, and of course, there's the news that Brody Lee has potentially signed with All Elite Wrestling. So we were expecting one of those guys, and we didn't get any. And the wrestling on the show just—it uh, was just kind of average, to be honest. So my final rating for this episode of Dynamite is a 4.75 out of 10. In my opinion, this was the weakest episode of, of Dynamite so far that I've seen. Which is unfortunate, but, you know, you can't keep knocking them out of the park forever, you know what I mean? Eventually, there's going to be a little bit of a dip, and unfortunately, it came at this point. I mean, it wasn't terrible, it was just, it was just unremarkable, you know? I mean, they're still building, they're getting ready to build, uh, they're basically hitting the reset button and getting ready for the double or nothing push. But, um, yeah, this show is just not really that remarkable to me. Just my opinion, but um, hopefully uh, this coming Wednesday will be a little bit better. So uh, that's going to do it. A little bit shorter episode than usual, but I wanted to uh, run through it because I also did the Revolution uh, review uh, today as well. And then I got a race review to do later on tonight. So as I said, busy, busy, busy. But uh, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, this is the Packer Man signing out. Bye. You better like and subscribe or face the consequences. You have been warned.